welcome to Constantu TV's Close Up on Workplace Law, where we zoom in on recent developments of interest to employers, to their attorneys, and to their human resources professionals. I'm your host, Lee Tyson, and I'm a partner in Constantu's Atlanta office. Today we're going to talk about one of my very favorite things to talk about, which is social media in the workplace. Social media in the workplace presents so many challenges and so much confusion for employers. But fortunately, here to talk to us today is Jonathan Yarbrough. And he is a partner in our Asheville, North Carolina office. And apparently he has been on social media before social media was even cool. So he has been talking about it and speaking about it and giving employers advice about it for many, many years. So we're very fortunate to have him here. And he's also got a Twitter account because he's not even just talking about social media. He is on social media. So you should follow him on Twitter and find out what all he has to say about these issues. But Jonathan, we're so excited to have you here today. Well, thanks, Lee. I'm happy to be here. Let's start big. I just want to start big. What is the worst social media workplace story you've heard? And hopefully it didn't involve me. Oh, it didn't involve you. I, I, you know, where to start? There are so many social media nightmares out there. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, the Justine, I think her name was uh, Sacco case, where she tweeted about going to Africa and hoping she doesn't get AIDS. Uh, but then, oh, I'm white, so I'm not going to get AIDS. Uh, police officers um, uh, tweeting about, uh, or not tweeting, it was on Vine, actually, which doesn't exist anymore. But uh, posting vines about stealing cocaine uh, from the uh, property room or using cocaine as their new workout drug. Uh, you know, I get calls at least weekly, if not daily, racist or misogynistic posts on Facebook uh, that your new employee has just made uh, and, in fact, is sitting in general orientation as we haul him out uh, uh, to make him a former employee. So these things happen all the time. Now, what can an employer really do to defend itself against these sort of things? Is there anything it can do? You know, I, I, I kid with my clients that the first thing you need to do to protect yourself really is walk your CEO back from the ledge a little bit. Because often the posts are about the CEO and he or she immediately wants to fire that employee Walk them back, calm them down a little bit. But really, you can do a fair number of things. One is have a decent policy in place. I like to talk about the things we can do as employees as opposed to a thou shalt not policy. But we have to have some thou shalt nots built into the policy, of course. But, you know, the fact of the matter is your employees are on social media. I mean, pretty much everybody is on social media. So we have to deal with it and deal with it appropriately. But a good policy is a good start, some training, some common sense rules. And then, frankly, if that doesn't work, maybe the employee's disciplined or terminated. They don't have to be disciplined under a social media policy either, though, do they? They could be disciplined under your regular disciplinary policies, correct? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You don't need an actual social media policy to discipline someone. But if you do something stupid on social media, you might wind up on the unemployment line. During President Obama's administration, the National Labor Relations Board obviously came up with a whole bunch of new case law and restrictions and general counsel memorandum that really restricted the employer's ability to regulate online activity by its employees. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Lee. You're, you're, regulate uh, is the key word. From my vantage point, the Labor Board came up with rules, regulations, cases where pretty much everybody's social media policy was illegal in some form or fashion, with the notable exception a few years ago of Walmart, which they blessed. A lot of Monday morning quarterbacking, as far as I see it, without a lot of real practical application by the Labor Board. Uh, they're parsing the words in your social media policy, and they're deciding that things might you know, chill or otherwise affect that employee's Section 7 rights. Uh, you know, the, the cases are, are few and far between where the employer has really uh, prevailed with a good, solid policy because the Labor Board is taking a very, very broad approach, a broad viewpoint as to what might affect or otherwise chill that employee's rights to speak out about terms and conditions of employment. Yeah, they, they were sort of clear about the idea that social media is a new water cooler. And so it's whatever you would be able to say to one or two other employees, privacy of the break room. Now, you can say that online, but that obviously presents all these different 
you know, challenges for an employer because of how quickly things can go viral. Oh my gosh, you're right about uh, social media being the new water cooler. I mean, Facebook is a billion person water cooler. Um, and, and things can go quickly viral. Uh, and that can really harm an employer. Uh, but, you know, employees have a certain uh, leeway, if you will, to speak harshly about the employer under the National Labor Relations Act, to use or, in the viewpoint of the employer, misuse uh, their logo, uh, their trademarks, and things of that sort. And that's just where we are with the current board. What I found with social media is everyone's an expert. Um, you know, the employee. Uh, has a rant uh, on social media, everybody weighs in, but not a soul has a complete set of facts. And frankly, it's driven me crazy with some of my clients because things will make the news or will be trending at least locally on social media, but yet no one has a clue what they're talking about. And as the lawyer, I can't jump in and go, hey, gang, <laughs> you know, here's the real deal. Uh, so it's, it's tough. No, I obviously have, I've been dealing with this issue for a long time. The NLRB is sort of my, my main practice area, so I have my own thoughts about this. But now that we're looking to have a more Republican-based uh, National Labor Relations Board, do you think that these rules and regulations will change at all? Well, I'm very hopeful. You know, I was excited to remember Ms. Gamera. Uh, was promoted and is taking over the board, but it's kind of like, well, we hardly got to know you except through your dissents since he's rolling off. So we'll see how the board shakes out. I do expect some of these rules to be rolled back uh, a little bit more of a practical application and less of this, um, well, it might have, you know, somehow uh, in some tortured way chilled an employee Section 7 uh, rights. So I'm hoping there's more practical application and less of this maybe could have kind of I don't know uh, approach that I think has been taken by the board. Just a voice of reason would be nice. It would be nice. All right. Well, John, thank you so much for being here today. I think this has been really interesting. I love talking about social media and I love talking with you. So thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Lee. It's my pleasure. And that's it for this edition of Close Up on Workplace Law. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.